I'm Brandi Francis. Happy birthday, America. Yeah, and I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this episode, we'll update you on all things bicycle and we'll dine under the stars in Annapolis. But first, making headlines this week. Light bulbs are popping off all over the county as a citizen group has presented an interim report about ways to innovate. The Commission on Government Innovation and Effectiveness released the report this week after months of study. They came up with several ideas to change how the county does business and also how to save money, something we can all get behind, right? Yes. <laughs> Here are a few of the recommendations. Having the SPCA take over the duties of animal control, outsourcing mechanics for non-public safety vehicle maintenance, consolidating transportation services, using taxicab vouchers for Uber and Lyft, increasing grants for private companies to execute stormwater projects, the commission was led by former West County Chamber of Commerce President and CEO Claire Lauder and Bill Westervelt of McGovern Smith Advisors in Arnold. The report is on the desk of County Executive Steve Hsu, who will evaluate the recommendations over the summer. You can never have too many new ideas, right, Brandy? I know, you can't. No, any, any bright ideas for the county? Oh, gosh, I might have to... Uh Hold them back. Yeah, I understand. I understand. <laughs> so it's time to fire up the grill once again. Woohoo! It's 4th of July weekend. Yay! And if you're looking for something to do, we have lots of options. Ready for the list, Kristen? Yes, I'm ready. All right, let's start with Fort Meade. There will be a day-long day festival followed by fireworks at the Red, White, and Blue Independence Day celebration from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. at the McLaughlin Parade Field on July 4th. I heard this one features zip line have rides. Have you been ziplining? No, I never have, but okay. I'd love to do it. Have I've you? Gone. I went in, um, oh, where'd I go? Uh, Belize. Uh, and it was incredible. Even a beautiful place, too. Yeah, yeah, but I'm sure it'll be so much fun at Fort Meade, too. Yes. Absolutely beautiful, too. Yeah. All right, next up, of course, is the Glen Burnie Improvement Association fireworks show at Saw Mill Creek Park on Dorsey Road at 9 p.m. on July 3rd. This is a really fun place to watch fireworks, and the rain date is Wednesday, July 5th. And, of course, we can't forget the city of Annapolis, where the annual parade begins at 6.30 p.m., and fireworks start at 9.15 p.m. on July 4th. May the 4th be with you. I like that. Another May the 4th. Yes. <laughs> so what are your plans? for the holiday um let's see you know i'm not i haven't gotten everything cemented just yet but i live in baltimore city mm -hmm. so lots of friends with rooftop decks oh. so on the actual fourth we're going to be doing one of those potluck grill kind of things um so i'm excited to maybe try a couple new recipes yeah. uh, but we'll be hanging out there so over the weekend we might do the pool we might do the beach depends on where the wind takes us yeah and you might be able to see some fireworks some around fireworks. the water yeah I so love that. Beautiful. What about you? Uh, just going to sit by the pool. Yes. And maybe a couple drinks. Not, right. too crazy. Not too crazy. Yeah, and get some sunshine. Hopefully the weather's beautiful. I'm hoping that this low humidity that we've had this week will be making a reappearance for the 4th. I so. hope so, too. So speaking of going out, I hear you have some pretty cool uh, outfits. I do have 4th of July outfits. I always try to dress according to the theme. My favorite holiday is always Halloween, but... For 4th of July, I um, have red, white, and blue anchor shorts. How fun. Yep. And I have this tank top that is white with red um, piping around it. Mm -hmm. And then I put on another tank top on top of it that's blue with white stars. So nice. I'm just one spectacular, just little sparkler. <laughs> what about you? Do you wear anything for 4th of July? Well, if we're going to be sitting by the pool, yeah. I will be wearing a swimsuit. Nice. And I'm good to that's go. That's you got to worry about. Yep. Very good. Yeah. All right, well, we love to have themes on the show, and today's themes, bikes. What better way to get out on a bike than to ride 3,064 miles from San Diego to Annapolis? The race across America landed in Annapolis on Friday. The winning riders, Team Via Sat, clocked in at five days, 22 hours, and 17 minutes. That sounds tiring. I know. <laughs> Solo rider Christoph Strasser won for the fourth time in just over eight days. Female RAAM rookie soloist came in on Sunday, and the first ever hand cyclist, Andre Kajlik, I'm probably saying this wrong, Kajlik, finished Monday. Now, I did my research here, Brandy, because that time sounds amazing. Thanks to Google Maps, we know that driving nonstop by car would take you 39 hours. For most people, it takes four or five hours driving, four or five days, sorry, driving 12 hours each day, which that's a lot of driving. And uh -huh. I like driving. But I would be nodding off, yeah. I'm very, very sure. Yes. So this is pretty incredible. The Ride Across America is a very challenging ride where racers can raise money for the charity of their choice. 
And we want to, of course, give a shout out to Team SOS with riders from Annapolis, Pasadena, and Crownsville who had to withdraw because a rider had to be hospitalized for a heat-related emergency. Turns out biking through Arizona in June is pretty tough, as I can imagine. I would think it'd be yeah. so hot. And I know my aunt and uncle live there, and they said it was 120 degrees. Okay, and biking all that way? Mm -mm. So I, I yeah. well, sympathize. Yes, yeah, that would and be a lot. Be safe, right? Yeah, always be safe. Mm -hmm. um, what is the furthest dis distance you've ever traveled on a bike, Brandy? On a bicycle? Yeah, on a bicycle. I would say 11 miles. Okay. But there were some stops in between, so yeah. it wasn't nonstop. I think if you have the endurance for it, yep. But you got to build it, and you have to be used to it. And how about you? 15. 15. So about the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know John Corrin's coming up on the show and he'll probably blow us both away, but. Yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> yes. All right, so we're gonna take a quick break and when we return, we will talk to John Corrin and you guessed it, he is from the county's Bicycle Commission and Bike AAA. Take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town and we will be right back. Welcome back. We're continuing, continuing the theme of bicycles on the show today. So we have two very special guests with us joining us in the studio. And this is a repeat performance for you as Mr. John Corrin. I think it's my fourth time. Yeah, it's your fourth time. And of course, you're with the Bicycle Commission and you're also with Bike AAA. And also we have a new guest with us. We've got a new friend. And this is Officer Stanley Newborn. Sir, right. welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for all your service and what you're doing around the county. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yes. And we, we're talking. We love bike patrol. We love bike patrol. <laughs> and we bike patrol really loves love you. bike patrol. <laughs> and bike patrol loves us, right? That's right. <laughs> um, we wanted to first get an update on the rider who was injured during the Ride Across America. Can you give us an update on that? Yeah, the Ride Across America is a 3,064-mile race from Oceanside, California, and it ends right here in Annapolis. And uh, which is awesome. we, we had an eight-man team which would race in a relay across the country, but they did have a, uh, a rider who suffered heat stroke pretty, pretty seriously. They stopped. Uh, he was hospitalized in Las Vegas, but he is doing much, much better. Good expected to, to make a full recovery. So, yeah, wow. very good news for Team SOS, our local uh, eight-man team. Yeah, well, we're happy to hear he's, he's doing better, and that's a long distance. What would you say is the longest that you've ever ridden? Three thousand. Well, I, I I would love to say I rode three thousand sixty-four miles, but actually, two years ago, I was the I was on the crew for Bike Like a Girl, the eight woman team, local Ooh. eight local women, and yeah. I was a crazy van driver. So while it's not my longest ride, I did do three thousand sixty-four miles across the country wow. with with, uh, with uh, four female cyclists. I was one on, on one of two squads of four. That's Unreal. awesome. But my own biking, probably 120 miles in a day. Wow. Wow. No, nonchalant. Yeah. yeah. Just 120, 120 miles. Right. Well, so Ooh. speaking of events, John, can you tell us uh, some of the upcoming events that are going to be happening? Yeah. Well, of course, the big one, and I hope you've seen or noticed our shirts, is the Anne Arundel County signature bike event, the Lifeline 100. That will be on October 1st this year. And I've been here four times because this will be our fourth year doing it. And we have here shirt. 2014 Lifeline, shirt 2015 Lifeline, and shirt 2016 
Lifeline. And you have to register if you want to find out what color our 2017 shirts will be. I'm oh, excited. Teaser? Are you going to give us a little? Yeah, yeah, teaser, teaser. If you want to register, go to, <laughs> go to www.lifeline100lifeline100.com. And uh, very, very easy to register. And this is an inclusive event. This is not just for the Lycra crowd that wants to go out and do 100 miles. We have a ride for them. We've got a 65 mile, but we also have 15 and 30 mile trail routes, which are perfect for families, recreational riders, special needs riders this year. We want to bring more and more special needs riders can register for a two for one fee with their accompanying rider. So come on out. We also have a free bike rodeo. I like the bike Which bike now. patrol <laughs> will provide for kids age four through 10. Have you done a Lifeline 100 yet, Stanley? I have not. This will be my first year. Oh, you're in for a treat. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sure so, I'll be up to the task. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, John, you're part of the Bicycle Commission, right? So I chair, yeah, I chair the Bicycle Commission. Okay, the you, uh, Anne Arundel County Bicycle yeah. Advisory Commission has been, um, we launched about a year and a half ago. We meet monthly. We move our meetings around the county all over the geography of the county. We've been down to Galesville. We've been up to Linthicum, Brooklyn Park, Odenton, uh, City of Annapolis, you name it. And we've got representatives from all over the county. And we have representatives uh, from City of Annapolis County and state. Our mission is to build out a safe, interconnected network of bike routes, both on-road routes, meaning new bike lanes, and also trails. And we are making great progress. In fact, I just posted this morning to the Fa uh, Bike AAA Facebook page, we've got four roads in the county that have been marked with uh, bike lane markings just this year. Wow. And that, that's a big deal. It's a great start. We've got a lot more to do. But yeah, four roads have been marked, one by the city and three by the county. Very good. And Stanley, you're just getting started with the commission, right? Correct. Very good. Well, the county executive's budget has $36 million for bike trail projects. Can you tell us about what those projects will do? Yes. The, the, there Any are, of these improvements that yes, you're yes, talking about? Yes, yes. There are about? three important trail projects that, that that money will fund. One is the Broadneck Trail. The Broadneck Trail uh, has one phase already built near Broadneck High School. It will connect Sandy Point State Park and the B&A Trail, close to Jones Station Road. That's so a good ride. Right. All trail from, from the beach at Sandy Point yeah. to the B&A. Second is the South Shore Trail. The South Shore Trail one day will connect Annapolis near the uh, near Anne Arundel Medical Center, all the way to Odenton. In Odenton, there'll be a connection from there to the existing W B and A Trail, the Washington uh, B and A Trail that goes from Odenton down to the Patuxent River, which brings me to Project Three. We have the six mile Anne Arundel County W B and A Trail, Odenton to the river. PG County has its own WBNA trail that's waiting for us on the other side of the river. We just need that hiker biker bridge, and that's project number three. Like it's the in hiker, design biker now. Bridge. Yep. <laughs> really important, uh, very, very important regional connection. Very good. And I know that right now we're having the I Can Bike camp going on. I'd love to hear about, we, we talked about this on the show last week, some of your experiences so far with the camp. You're both doing it. Yeah, now. we were there together, so Stanley, yeah. go ahead. Correct. So I showed up today um, with my police mountain bike, and the energy from the kids was just amazing. I mean, they like seeing me there. I like being there. Aww. And, I mean, I remember two specifically, Ellie and uh, Elliot. Uh, Elliot, he was so excited. He brought over his two twin brothers to introduce them to me. And Ellie was just, she was just a very, very polite young lady. And they both were doing pretty good on the bike. Ellie, she uh, was on two wheels, and it's her first time, I believe. And uh, she progressed Yay, very Ellie. well. Ellie! Yeah. And Elliot! <laughs> Awesome. Yep. So I'm sure this has been a really re rewarding experience Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. They right. love the lights on my bike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in the fall, the Lifeline 100 is coming up, correct? Yeah. Um, so how would people sign up for that? Yeah, so again, the, the, uh, go to the website, Lifeline 100, lifeline100.com. You'll find everything you need to know about the ride. You'll find route maps. You'll find photo albums from the, the first three years. Um, yeah. Registration you can do online or there's a mail-in form. So uh, yeah, you'll find everything you need to know. But we've at got Lifeline another exciting fall event coming up. Talk to me about Bike to School. So Bike to School, we actually um, Bike to School is a national program. Okay. And uh, this year, uh, it's part of. It, it usually happens in May, which is National well, National Bike Month. We had over a thousand 
children in Anne Arundel County ride to school on Bike to School Day. I rode alongside County Executive Steve Shue, which I have to tell you, had a backpack with a Curious George lunchbox hooked on the back of County it. County executive so after our own hearts, <laughs> let me tell you. So Steve and I rode together with 200 kids to Broadneck Elementary School, first time they've ever done Bike to School Day, with police escort. And so it, it was a phenomenal event. Stanley rode with some kids at another school. Maybe you want to tell them about that. Yes, my partner and I, we rode with uh, some kids from uh, one of the elementary schools off of uh, Benfield. I forget the name Shipley's of it. Shipley's Choice. Choice. Okay. And uh, they were very, very excited to have us along for the ride. Aww. And uh, we look forward to doing it again next year. Well, that's quite a turnout. Absolutely. Yeah. And there should, you know, there's a, bike to, there's a walk to school day, October 4th. But we like to consider a bike and, or walk to school either in May or in October. So I think we may do maybe a smaller scale, but we may do another one October 4th. We should do lots of them. We, as we build these trails, bike to school day will be every day. That Broadneck Trail I mentioned, Sandy Point to the BNA yeah. along College Parkway, when that is built, the kids won't need police escort. Every day can be bike to school day. Cool about that. That's outstanding. <laughs> yeah, so I know that you know, all of these events are benefiting children all over the county, and Lifeline 100 has some charities, right, that, that as benefit, how, who is it? We do, we, the, the three hosts of the uh, Lifeline 100 are Anne Arundel County Police, hey. Anne Arundel County Rec and Parks, and Bike AAA. All right. And our three nonprofit beneficiaries sort of line up with the host partners. Police, it's the, the uh, crisis response system that is so important now, especially with, with the opioid problem in the county. They come in and provide social services to, um, to, to people in distress working with the police. Rec and Parks has a charity called Recreation Deeds for Special Needs that provides recreation for, for children and adults with, with special needs. That's one of the beneficiaries. And then Bike AAA, which is a 501c3 all-volunteer group advocating for more safe places to ride, bike and driver education, we're a beneficiary as well. And we know that's your baby because you've been involved with that, that for is, a long time. That is my baby. <laughs> I, I'll also add that we have two, two, so far, two nonprofit partners that are using Lifeline 100 as a fundraising ride. One is Susan Komen Foundation, Breast right. Cancer. Yeah. Uh, research and the other is our own local Rise for Autism, yes. which hosted the uh, bike camp, and they will use Lifeline 100 as a fundraising event as well. So we're very happy to have those partners. This is such a wonderful thing. I mean, you're doing something good for yourself. You're getting that exercise, and you're also helping with benefiting all these other programs. And we love having you guys on here to chat with us about what's going on. Before you go, though, it's summertime. We're seeing increased bike traffic. I would love to cover some safety tips for both riders and drivers. Absolutely. Take so, it away, Stanley. <laughs> so uh, for the riders, you want to make sure that you're hydrated. Um, you want to make sure that you're wearing visible clothing. Uh, you want to make sure that your bike is equipped with some type of light or reflective gear. Preferably a light, though, because that will grab the attention of the drivers a lot uh, better than a reflective light would. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure you're wearing a helmet. And you don't have to wear gloves, but it's preferred or suggested that you do because you, the skin on your hands doesn't heal like the rest of the skin on your body. So it's best to keep those covered up because when you fall off, the human instinct is to reach yeah. out to try and catch yourself. Yeah. So you want to use those gloves to protect yourself. And the other thing is you want to make sure you're wearing closed toe shoes so that way in the event of your foot slipping off that pedal, you don't get your foot caught in that crankshaft oh. with the chain or you don't get caught in between the bar in the back where the... Uh, rear crank is. I'm thinking of you kids riding out there to the community pool, especially when you're in flip-flops and your feet are all wet. Correct. Yeah. Or Crocs. Yeah. You know, you, you don't want to wear anything like that. Um, the other thing is the drivers, they want to make sure that they're giving the cyclists at least three feet. Um, so that way everyone, we can share the road together safely. Um, and the drivers, just, the riders want to make sure that they're abiding by that three foot rule as well. And they want to make sure that they're maintaining eye contact with the drivers when they do arrive to intersections. You want to make sure they see you. Uh, I'd wave, you know, just to make sure you have their attention. And then you can go ahead and proceed through. So it sounds like, in short, you see us and we see you. Correct. And that's the important thing. I should probably wear my... Uh, Lifeline 100 2015 shirt if I want to be seen. You are very right. visible. Visible, visible. 
Well, thank you both so much for coming on and sharing your afternoon with us. It's always a pleasure having you in. And of course, we are so delighted to meet you, oh. Officer Newborn, and thank you for your service to the county. No problem. And uh, happy safe riding out there to everyone. Make sure you get involved with Lifeline 100 or any of the other fantastic bike events that are coming up. Make sure you're biking to school, biking to work, and we're going to keep improving those bikeways in Anne Arundel County, right? Absolutely right. right. We're Very building good. out the network. Love it. That's right. All right. Well, we'll be right back with more Week in Review right after this. Don't go anywhere. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Welcome back. If you haven't been to Dining Under the Stars in Annapolis, you really need to check it out. Our own Sarah Gannon did just that. Sarah? Thanks, guys. I'm here at Annapolis uh, West Street, and here is Eric Evans with the Annapolis Arts District. Welcome to Dinner Under the Stars. Thank you. Can you talk about this great event that you have going on here? It's a lot of energy here today. It is. This is Annapolis' newest, biggest tradition. On Wednesday nights from 6 to 10, you can come out and have dinner at any of the restaurants here on the first block of West Street. There's dinner in the streets. There's live music. We have... Uh, Gypsy jazz music tonight that's playing. Uh, we have Travis Pastrana coming out tonight. There's plein air painters out. You know, so it's something different all the time. And it's just a fun time to get out with your community, enjoy a nice dinner with friends and family. Now, do you have to make any reservations ahead of time? I do recommend making reservations to get in. Um, we do have seating for people without reservations. But if you want a guaranteed seat, go to dinnerunderthestars.org and make reservations with the restaurants. Very good. Um, can you also, is there a list of different bands on that website also? If you follow us on Facebook, we do announce each week who the next band's going to be. Good, very good. So it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of people on there posting pictures and videos as well, so you can get an idea of what this fun event is like. Okay, well, wonderful. Well, thanks for um, your contributions to Annapolis. You, you, this is awesome. This is awesome. This is my first time I've been out here, so it's a great event. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And back to you in the studio. Thanks, Sarah. Now here's a pro tip for you. Make sure you make reservations with the restaurant of your choice well in advance, because it's a pretty hot ticket. Have you ever been? No. OK, I've know. only seen pictures, and I want to go. Maybe this is the year. But lucky Sarah for being out there. And she also talked to Travis Pastrana. I mean, I'm jealous. I mean, me too. I saw that episode, me and too. I am completely jealous. Me too. Yes. I mean, that's crazy. But this is such a great program, and it's great to get out there, not just to hobnob and maybe do, you know, see some friends and be out and um, enjoying some nice weather in the summer, but also to su support some local businesses. Absolutely. So, it's always yeah. nice to, to support the small guys yes. and, and, and the community. There's some good restaurants out there. Absolutely, so. especially in our county. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So talk Talk to me more about 4th of July. Do you guys have any traditions? Is there anything you cook or anything you order to make your party more um, celebratory? Do you guys, what do you guys do? Uh, I think we always do just the fruit tray with yeah, the red, tray. white, and blue fruit. You mm -hmm. always have the strawberries, the blueberries, some whipped cream, like a little yep. cake. Yeah. How about you? Do you, okay, I remember this growing up. Do you remember when like jello molds and jello cakes were a big thing? Yes. I remember that on 4th of July. Not really the trend much anymore, even though. Jello's still out there and it's it still is. delish. Mm -hmm. um, and the like jiggler stars where you would take like cookie cutters. And, remember that? <laughs> yes. um, I made sure I Pinterested mm -hmm. a recipe that is this pie. Um, you actually put like a piece of foil in the middle and you put raspberries on raspberries. You make like a flag. Mm -hmm. So it's raspberries and blueberries. And the way that you lattice on top makes it look like the stripes. So it ends up with this pie that looks like the American flag. And I thought that was pretty cool, and I might be able to do that. It'll probably turn out like a total disaster. Uh, yeah, Pinterest fail here all the Pinterest time. Fail, I always so. try. But yeah, so tell me about, all right, so, so speaking of July 4th, yeah. 
And I know you love music. I do love yeah. So let's talk let's about it. some, some Ooh, songs. I like this. About rock and roll. I like this contemporary. project. Contemporary, what do you think? All right, so uh, we gotta have some Springsteen on there. Born in the USA. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna throw a little Katy Perry in there for the young ones, baby, you're a firework. Fireworks. Yes, um, how about some R-O-C-K in the USA. One of your favorites. Tom Petty. Uh, I play it on karaoke. Yeah, yes. American Girl. Love, love yes. him. Tom um, Petty. Proud to be an American. That's a good one too. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, what are some other good ones? I mean, of course, your anthems, your your national anthem. Right. What's the American one they play Beautiful. at the baseball games? Oh, uh, God Bless America. I know. Yep, that's a good one. Yep, and. What, what you'll hear at the uh, Camden Yards is, thank God I'm a country boy. Yep. What, any other songs you can think of? Gosh. My Country Tis of Thee. Uh-huh. Um, America the Beautiful, yep, we said that one. I think that, that's about, that's, oh, and when you do America the Beautiful, it's gotta be the Ray Charles version, for me. <laughs> that's what I say, yeah. So we wish all, right. all of you out there a happy fourth. Absolutely, safe, very safe. safe. Especially if you're on a bike. Yes. Yeah. And that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook or YouTube by searching for Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county. And we'll see you next time. Brandy, you did a great job. Thanks, man. You come back anytime. <laughs> <laughs>